Opposition leader Peter Dutton is speaking. Since those records were collected, and it's starting to look a lot like what happened in the 1990s when Labor were in government, and in that period, uh, and I remember it well, we had a lot of Australians who lost their businesses, who lost their homes, and found it really difficult to balance their budgets. So I worry that Labor, with two budgets, have made it harder for Australians, not easier. And with Labor's economic decisions that they've made, they're choking our economy. They're driving up inflation. It's no mistake that inflation is higher in Australia than G7 countries around the world, except for the United Kingdom. That core inflation is an indicator that the problem is here in Australia with inflation. Yes, there are international factors, but there always are. The biggest impact factor influencing inflation at the moment in our country is coming out of Canberra, not out of the Kremlin. And the Prime Minister needs to take responsibility for that. Now, we saw the Prime Minister this morning speaking from his Kirribilli mansion telling Australians that there was nothing here to see, nothing to worry about, that prices are coming down. Well, I don't know any Australians at the moment who are better off today than they were when Anthony Albanese was elected Prime Minister. And the decisions he's made now in two budgets around energy, around all of the cost of living pressures, you're feeling that, you're paying the price of Labor's mistakes. And we want to put pressure on the government to make it easier for families. And the decisions they've made in two budgets clearly have made it harder for families. Uh, that's a very important point to make. Uh, a couple of other issues that uh, I think it's worth uh, uh, noting. Uh, I think there's a lot of pressure now starting to build from the international community on the Prime Minister and the Defence Minister to provide significant but meaningful support to Ukrainians because the Ukrainians are in the fight of their life against a Russian autocrat. Men, women and children will lose their lives in Ukraine without the assistance of countries like Australia. Uh, when we were in government, we provided significant assistance and we listened to the requests of President Zelensky. He requested the Bushmasters. We supplied the Bushmasters to him. The Ukrainian defence authorities at the moment, who know the situation best on the ground, have given a list of defence material and issues and, and uh, equipment that they believe will give them the best effort to fight the Russians. And the government needs to stop listening to bureaucrats and start acting in our country's best interests, uh, but most importantly in the best interests of the uh, Ukrainians who need that equipment to push back against the Russians. Uh, in relation to The Voice, uh, obviously Linda Burney is uh, providing comment uh, today, uh, but Nobody's disputing what Linda Burney is saying about helping Indigenous Australians. We all want to do that, but the problem is that it goes much further than what she's suggesting today. And this continuous misleading of the Australian public by Minister Burney is only making a bad situation worse for the Yes case. Uh, as we know from the hand-picked people on the referendum working group, hand-picked by the Prime Minister, they're out there saying that the voice by design will have an influence on every element of government work. It'll influence the way in which we make decisions in the Cabinet process. Uh, that's just the design of it. So the situation at the moment is that Linda Burney's trying to pretend that the voice uh, is one thing, but it's actually another. And Australians aren't stupid, they get it. And they know that if a bad designed voice goes into the Constitution, you can't change it. It's not like a law, and you can't out-legislate with a bill through the Parliament or an Act of Parliament uh, to undo what's in the Constitution. That's just the reality of the way in which our system of government works. So I think there's a lot that the Prime Minister needs to answer for at the moment. Uh, on The Voice, Australians want to help Indigenous Australians, but we don't want a new chapter in the Constitution. It's going to change our whole system of government and not produce the practical outcomes for Indigenous Australians. And that's why I think Linda Burney today needs to be honest uh, instead of trying to pull the wool over the eyes of the Australian public, they're not going to fall for it. They realise what's going on here. Uh, and corporate elites who are out there at the moment telling Australians how they should vote and that we'll be a better country uh, and you can have pride in Australia again if you just follow the lead of some of these multi-millionaires who are running huge public listed companies. Australians aren't silly. They're not going to fall for that. They're going to make up their own, their own minds and they want to base their decision on information that's given to them. And at the moment, the Prime Minister is making a deliberate decision in relation to the voice to keep the crucial detail from the Australian public. I'm happy to take any questions. Do you uh, regret having a great big business and putting money into the Yes campaign? Aren't they entitled to do what they like? I, I have no regret uh, at all. I think the fact is that uh, uh, the 
many of the listed companies uh, in Australia today, the CEOs, are worried about uh, influencers and they're worried about uh, the Twitter sphere and they're less worried about uh, what's happening to their customer base uh, and much less uh, the views of their employees. I, I think a company, for uh, example, uh, to look at West Farmers, I think their $2 million would be better off uh, reducing prices in uh, their supermarkets or reducing prices at Bunnings. Uh, when I go to Bunnings, I want to pay less for my goods, not more. And I don't want to, every time I hand over my credit card or cash at Bunnings or at Coles, uh, I don't want part of that money going to an activist CEO. Uh, these CEOs who are closer to the union bosses uh, than they are the workers, uh, I think they've got a lot to answer for. And they're happier, it seems, in the company of uh, the super fund CEOs and uh, all of those people who are on millions of dollars a year. They've lost touch with their workers. And so is the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister is happier in that company with the union bosses and the super bosses and the CEOs of big businesses uh, than in the company of workers. And the fact is that today uh, the Liberal Party represents the values of workers and of tradies. And I don't apologise for that whatsoever. What do you think is the number one issue facing Indigenous Australians then? I think Indigenous Australians, like all Australians, are facing uh, cost of living pressures. Uh, they're paying a lot more for their electricity under this government. They're paying a lot more for their gas. Uh, they're paying more for their fuel. They're certainly getting less for their grocery uh, bill when they, uh, uh, when they go to the supermarket. And in Indigenous communities, particularly in remote uh, and regional areas, uh, those Indigenous families uh, are doing it very tough. I mean, in, in Alice Springs or Sejuna or Tennant Creek or Kimberleys, Leonora, Laverton, uh, these are areas where billions of dollars of money poured into the funnel from Canberra becomes a trickle into these communities and people are living in squalor without uh, the proper services that, uh, that we would expect. But the voice is not going to solve that problem. Uh, the voice is a Canberra voice. Uh, it's a grouping of 24 elites who aren't going to represent the views of Indigenous women and elders in Indigenous communities. I want to listen to those voices. And that's why I visited there. And frankly, I think the Prime Minister, instead of flying his jet across these communities on his way to another international fora, uh, he'd be better off to stop the plane, roll his sleeves up and get out and talk to real people. The Prime Minister today shouting from Kirribilli there that Australians have nothing to worry about, that their mortgages are OK, uh, it's a nonsense. He's out of touch with the average Australian at the moment. We've been to Food Bank and to Salvation Army uh, and to small businesses around the country at the moment. We know at Food Bank they've got a 57 per cent increase in the number of people presenting to just feed their families. That's unprecedented. Uh, we know, as I said before, that 40 per cent of Australian mortgage holders struggled to pay their mortgage in May. Uh, and that's happened under 14 months of Labor's watch the official cash rate has gone from 0.35 of 1% up to 4.1% and families are struggling to pay their bills under Labor. Uh, and that's very reminiscent of what we saw uh, when Labor was in power in the early 90s and I don't want a repeat of that for our country. That is where we leave the opposition leader, Peter Dutton, speaking in Adelaide about today's stories, including the decision by the RBA to leave rates on hold, but also the Indigenous voice to Parliament ahead of Linda Burney's speech at the National Press Club coming up later this afternoon.